Welcome back to the third part of today and we are going to talk about 3D printers. Why 3D printers are interesting? There is, there is a lot of research going on on 3D printers. Either you can make new materials, you can use them for biology, for example, for printing biological structure, but there are also some other people using it for origin of life and many other different, different research lines. Even if you don't want to use it for anything super fancy, they are super useful for making, uh, for making things in the lab. So for example, you can have this one, which is uh, an extra plate in the desiccator. You can modify your UVVs. You can make your UVVs with flow cell just because you 3D print a part, you 3D print the flow cell and now it works as a flow cell in the UVVs. You can modify part of your microscope you can if you can design and you can 3d print you can modify anything you want in the lab also for very stupid things for example the electrophoresis comb they can cost more than 10 euro while if you just print it they cost a few cents and you can use it also for making phantom organs and if you are doing nanomedicine we will use 3d printing for making molds for using a phantom in the mri now this course i think six years ago started with 3d printing so we bought a lot of 3d printers and the students assembled those 3d printer and programmed those 3d printer it was not easy at all it was quite messy but at the end some of them managed to work seven years ago those printers were really difficult to to build you had to solder a lot of parts together you have to sew different parts this one was not easy at all Today I'm going to talk about three different machines or three different 3D printers, which are the most common one, which is the fused deposition modeling that is called FDM, stereolithography, which is SLA and masked stereolithography, MSLA. Let's start with SLA. SLA use a resin bath and you are photo curing this resin using a high power laser. Uh, the reaction here is usually uh, an acrylate reaction, so an acrylate polymerization, which is triggered by light. So you have also a photo initiator, this one will give the first radical and then the acrylates can polymerize. We will see in depth those one in the lab. They can print very transparent material and this is why they are used for making microfluidics, because now you can print a microfluidic device which is transparent but on the other hand the material you don't know which material you're using because they don't tell you they sell the resin but they rarely say which chemicals are in the resin this uh this is another kind of microfluidics which is way smarter because now you use it as a lego pieces so you can make different lego pieces you clump them together and they work as a microfluidics so each one of those pieces can make different things. You can have a splitter, you can have a mixer, you can have a droplet generator, so you can really plug and play the microfluidics you want at the end. It has, those kind of printer have really nice resolution, so they can go up to 25 microns on the Z direction, and the laser spot is more or less 150 microns. So those are the minimum features that you can get out of those printer. The point is that this one it's extremely slow because you have to move the laser for photopolymerizing then you need to raise the stage a little bit you need to bring it back and then you need to photopolymerize again similar mechanism are the mask sla those are 10 times or 20 times cheaper than the laser because they are not using laser or moving parts these work with a uv light uh, led uv light on the bottom then a mask which is usually an lcd screen so those printers are also called lcd printer and then the resin the watt with the resin on it and the only things here is that the uv light is almost always on and the way you control which part photopolymerize is using an lcd so the lcd can be either black or transparent and when it's transparent it means that the resin in that point will photo cure and photopolymerize the dark part will not and this is exactly the same mechanism of the laser, but now you are polymerizing one layer at a time. So those ones are also really faster. Roughly the same mechanism, um, with the same mechanism, but instead of using a laser, you use a two photon, photo, fo two photon polymerization, then you can reach extremely small feature. 
you can see the scale bar, but those one are 100 micron or 200 micron small object. And you can reach this not by a laser, but through photon photomolymerization. Those are another ones, and you can see the resolution in 20 microns. So the resolution here is below one micron. This is the state of the art 3D printing. As I told you, there are a lot of different materials. Most of the time they don't tell you which material is, which chemicals are in the resin. But on the other hand, those are, um, those are acrylates. So if you know a little bit of chemistry, you can actually make your own resin. And this is what we are doing in the lab. Second kind of printer are the fuse deposition modeling printer. Those one are the most, uh, the most sold printer. Those are the standard printer, let's say, and they work by melting plastic. So you have a filament, the filament goes inside, it reaches the nozzle, which is at 200 degrees. The plastic is molten now, and you can make layer by layer with this plastic. They are usually very cheap, so way cheaper than an SLA, but they have lower resolution. A lower resolution, so for example, this one, which is an Ultimaker, it has a resolution of X and Y, they say about 100 micron, and they say also that the accuracy is around 12 microns. This is the accuracy of the motors, not of the final 3D printed part itself, because if you check the nozzle, the nozzle is where you squeeze your plastic in. The nozzle are minimum, the minimum size of the nozzle is 250 microns. So it means that the spot, it must be 250 microns. So even if I manage to move the motor of 10 micron, doesn't mean anything because the nozzle is still 250 microns. So my line cannot be 10 micron, must be minimum 250 microns. Also in this case, you have quite a lot of different materials. Uh, you can print from, you can print a lot of different polymers if they are thermoplastic. So if it means that if I can raise the temperature, they will flow better and I can make layer by layer. The question that I have for you is what's the difference between a resin printed part and thermoplastic. This is something I will ask you on Friday. Also in this case we can make our own material because we know how thermoplastic works, uh, we know which kind of things can go inside the thermoplastic and this is example for and this for example we did our own dichroic material just by using nanoparticles inside the plastic. Those nanoparticles give you the uh, look of the Lycurgus cup which is a cup made in the fourth century and if you see the light reflected, it looks green, but if you see light transmitted, it, the cup looks red. And we managed to do the same, uh, the same dichroic colors by using a 3D printer and nanoparticles, which in this case were gold nanoparticles and silver nanoparticles. Now let's go one moment in the lab so I can really show you hands-on which printer do we have in the lab and how do they work. See you later. Those two, both the Ultimaker and the Artillery, are FDM printer, so Fuse Deposition Modeling printer. It means that they pick up plastic from here, they melt it through, they melt it through the nozzle, and this one then will be delivered layer by layer on the build plate. Same things for the Artillery, so this is your roll of plastic, is going through and then is passing through your hot um, your nozzle which is down here and then is delivering the plastic layer by layer the main difference between those two is that this one is called boden tube so this that you see here is the boden tube this means that the motor for driving the plastic through it's outside the printer so this motor will move this plastic inside the tube and then inside the nozzle. With the bottom tube, the head is um, light or lighter than the normal printer because you don't have any motor here. So the plastic is driven by a motor that is outside. So usually those printer can print faster than the, the direct drive. This, on the other hand, is a direct drive. So you can see the motor is directly on top of the nozzle. So the plastic is driven by the motor that is here. Up here, there is nothing. This makes 
the part heavy because now the motor is here so this part is heavy but it can print a lot of different materials so you can print uh, multiple materials rather than the ultimaker rather than with the bowden tube and if you want to have fun this one it's a filament sensor so if the sense if there is no filament inside you should see this light going off as you see can you explain me how this works what we can print with those two printers those are the standard printer that we have in the lab and we are printing a lot of different um, well let's say things in plastic this for example was printed and this is a stage for a microscope those are the microscope parts that still have to be built uh, but we use those printer also for making microfluidics in pdms so this is a piece of here you can see it this is a piece of pdms that we did using those printers but we will see that in week four i guess week four so those are the standard printer and those are the printer that also you will use for making your own uh, cubet holder for the arduino so this one for example was a cubet holder for um for this project for your for the project that you will do at home all right then i didn't explain in the slide but this is um, kind of direct ink uh, printing so you have a syringe here uh, and this syringe can move in two dimensional on this plate and with this one we print our uh, pcb boards so this one was printed using this machine then we have the form tree as i explained you the form tree works with this resin so here i have my vat with resin on the bottom i have a laser that it's passing through and it's uh, using the laser for photo cross linking this resin and this is the build plate so the build plate will go down you have the first layer that it's 25 or 50 microns then it's raised and then you have the second layer and then the second layer, the third layer fourth layer and so on so this one this is the part that it's going to move while printing so as i told you this one is very precise and you can print parts like this one uh, this is for an nmr project but you can also print directly microfluidics and again we will see this one in week four then we have two masked sla uh, the mechanism is similar to the sla so to the form tree but they are extremely cheap because they use um, they use an LCD screen for driving the light. So now I'm showing you a little bit how this works. Again, this one is the vat with the resin. You can see the liquid resin. This one is the LCD. And on the bottom you have a UV LED. So if I'm going to this one, no, sorry. you should be able to see the yeah you see this one is the uv light passing through it's not really uv it's 405 nanometers just for fun i'm going to do it again so the lcd is always black when it gets transparent or in the pixel in which it gets transparent the light can pass so this is a test it will do this and you can see that the light is passing it means that in this part here the, pho the photopolymer will polymerize the mechanism for the build plate is the same so this one will go down will go down and print the first 50 microns and then it will raise up and this is what drives the the build plate for going down and up and down here why we have those machines in the lab is because we are doing our own materials um, if i break this one i have a little bit less problem if i break the big one that is quite expensive so for example this is i don't know if you can see really how 
light it is, but this is a fluorescent material that we are printing with those machines because we are making our own resin. This is a palladium nanoparticles material and we are also working on making the plastic more transparent. So for example, you can see this plastic, how transparent it is. So those two are for resin development and 3D printing development. This is for obtaining the best resolution that we can get in the lab. This is for printing PCB boards, so for making connection on the boards. And those two are the standard FDM printer that we have in the lab. All right, I hope I gave you enough information on all of those printers. Naturally, if you have any question, we will see ourselves on Friday. See you later. And welcome back. Uh, the only things that it's missing now, you know more or less how all the printer works. The only things missing now is how to design your 3D object. And I will suggest you to use Tinkercad and I will link a video on instruction on how to use Tinkercad. Say it so, I want to close today saying we have seen a lot of do it yourself and that's because there is a revolution going on and it's the maker revolution. This revolution is due to 3D printers because now you can use 3D printer for making your object and cheap microcontrollers. Those things are going to be really useful in the future even if you are not in academia anymore but if you gain knowledge on 3D printing, on 3D design microcontroller and how to program them, then you can do a lot of different things. I will put those two papers in the link and if you read them, you can see why it is so important to do it yourself, sensor, devices or anything else in the lab. And that's all for today. See you on Friday.